welcome everyone to episode six of the Secrets to Seed Bead. For those of you that don't know, we're creating a 10 part series about all kinds of different seed bead techniques. And each episode builds on what we've done before. So last episode, episode five, we made this even count peyote bracelet. Lovely, even count with a fancy pico edge and points on the end. This week, we're going to build on these ideas and going from even count peyote, we're going to do some odd count peyote. Uh, odd count is really important to know uh, because that's the way you get these points. Uh, when you're doing even count, you'll always come down to two and you won't get sharp points. So anytime you have a design you want to be symmetrical, you need to do odd count peyote. And we're also going to do this super supple, wonderful, sort of snaky, filled tubular netting stitch. Now, each one of these techniques you can probably find on firemountaingems.com because we've done lots of tutorials about all these different seed bean things. We're just compiling it all into this nice 10-part series. But you can also check out all the individual techniques at firemountaingems.com. We're going to get started on this thing right here. So let's get a little closer so you can see what I'm doing as I make this tubular filled netting stitch. So while we're getting a little closer, I picked up a needle some thread. This is four pound fire line, smoke color. I also have these really pretty four millimeter carnelians. Some size 15s, that's just a stray, go away. Some size 15s, those are the smallest seed beads we sell at Fire Mountain Gem in white and black. And we're going to start that tubular netting stitch that I showed you here, here uh, that one. We're gonna work on that. All right, so to start that, we pick up a carnelian, a white bead, oh, a carnelian, a white bead, a carnelian, and a white bead. This is a really fun uh, pattern. You can you can uh, challenge us. I'm using three sets now. You could do four sets. You could do five sets. Uh, experiment with different sizes, different uh, colors. Uh, different numbers, just have fun with it. So I'm pulling this through. I did not use a stop bead, so I'm being careful not to pull it all the way off my thread. I'm leaving an eight inch tail so that I have something to finish with when I'm done. And I'm going to go through these beads again in the same direction so that I can make a circle out of them. So I'm going to pull those tight to make a circle. Da, 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 da. And then I'm going to make a simple knot. Simple knot. And I'll make it a double knot. So I've got this little triangular shaped little gizmachi. That's a word I invented, gizmachi. There we go. And so I've got this three triangle thing. Now we're going to really mess up your head because I'm going to pick up four black beads. One, two, th three, four, a white, and four more black beads. One, two, three, four. And they are going, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up already because I want to be coming out of a white bead when I do this. So I'm actually going to go through this just a little bit further so I can be coming out of a white bead. Go through that carnelian and go through this white bead. There we go. So I'm coming out of a white bead over here. Make it so you can all see. And then one, two, three, four, a white. And one, two, three, four. And go through the next white bead. Pass the carnelian into this next white bead. And this makes like um, a, a little frame for that carnelian. And it's actually going to go up this way. And it's going to look more triangular. But that's the way it looks when you're starting. And a lot of times in seed bead work, when you're starting, it's very 
is this really going to work? That's, that's what you're thinking. This is not going to work. This looks crazy. It looks weird. It's not going to work. Have faith. It's going to work. So I'm doing it again. I'm picking up four blacks, a white, and four blacks. And I'll go through the next white seed bead. Right there. Hoping my hand's not in the way. And I'll pull that through. There we go, making this fun little pattern. Do it again. Ooh, I need more black seed beads. More black seed beads. I have more. I have plenty. Here's a little tip for you. I love these triangle trays. I use them for everything. They work as scoops. They work great for picking up beads that your cat has knocked on the floor. Uh, <laughs> they're a wonderful thing. So uh, four more black seed beads. Three, four, a white, and four black seed beads. One, two, three, three, four. And go through the next white. So here we have our little nice little framed little bit of carnelians. Now I want to go up a row, which means I want to come out of this white seed bead right here. So I need to go through these blacks and the white so that I am coming out that white seed bead. And these rows alternate, so the next row is going to be carnelians. So I'll add a carnelian. Come on, little guy. Don't roll away from me. And it's going to go through, not this white bead, but the next one after that, the one that's on the tips of our frames. That's where we're going to go. So I've come from this white bead, and I'm going to go over to this white bead. And that's going to start pulling this up as soon as I release it from this thing in the jig. Mm-hmm. Let go. There we go. That's going to pull that carnelian up and the seed beads up so we can start forming a tube. You won't see it yet. Like I said, this is still at the point where this isn't going to work. This is impossible. Add another carnelian. Have faith. Skip that white bead. And go through the next white bead. The one that's at the tip of that framework, kind of like a little V. Pull everything tight. And that's one of the hard things too, is maintaining all the tension on this while you're working. If you can just grab a hold of that thread, give it a good pull and get everything all tightened up. And another carnelian. Everything works in threes for this particular pattern I'm doing. And I'm going to go through, not this white seed bead, but the next one, the one that was at the tip. Sure, go through there. I will make it go. There we go. Through that white seed bead. Pull everything tight. And now we've got at least a little ball. It's not a tube yet, but it's going to be. And I'm going to need some more of those white seed beads. Of my little scoop. Okay, and we do it again. Four blacks, a white, and four blacks. And through the next white seed bead. And we're going to make another frame around the carnelians again, just like before. We're going to keep doing that. Four blacks. Oh, white. Isn't this easy? It looks so complex. I know one of our camera guys was saying, wow, that looks really cool. That looks hard. It is not hard. All of these seed beads techniques basically aren't hard. They're just time consuming, patience wielding, <laughs> um, lots and lots of patience. These are great things when you get into your Zen mood and you're or you're just sitting in front of the TV or something. 
I can't just watch TV. I have to do something else at the same time. So it's usually a seed beating for me. Okay, I'm gonna, where am I going? Oh, I'm going into the next white one right here. This is the third one, so that one's a little harder to see, that that is gonna be the one. Because we need to make a frame around this carnelian. Just the white bead, not the black one as well. There we go. And we're ready for the row of carnelians. And we're going to keep repeating that and repeating that row of carnelians, a row of black and white beads, a row of carnelian, a row of black and white beads. And this is going to get longer and longer and longer. And I'm going to end up with a piece more like this. Oh, no. There's my tail. There it is. Like this one here. Ta-da. Now the question is, how do you put that cool cone on it? The cone for the end. That's what we need to know now. There's lots of different ways to do that. In fact, I think we have a, an entire video on just different ways to end these tubular stitches. I'm going to do my favorite way, which uses a little bit of wire. And I'll take, oh, six inches of wire or so. This is 20 gauge uh, silver plated wire. Nothing expensive, nothing, nothing fancy. Just plain old plated wire. And I'm going to make a wrap loop on the end of this. Again, if you've been watching, if you're a fan of FireMountainGems.com, you'll find that we have lots of tutorials on things like this, like how to make a wrap loop. So I'm going to make this wrap loop and not assuming you already know how. So first thing I do is make a 90 degree bend with my chain nose pliers. Next thing I do is I grab round nose pliers, they're different, and I'm going to grip this right above the bend, roll that wire up and over the jaw, I'm going to take the jaws out, replace it by putting the lower jaw into that loop, finish the wrap the rest of the way around, change hands, now with this tail here, I'm going to use my chain nose pliers again to wrap the tail around. And I don't need a lot of wraps because this is going to be hidden inside the cone. It doesn't need to look pretty. It just needs to be secure. So this is a, a wonderful little wrap loop. Nothing fancy. It's not even very pretty. It's just an ordinary wrap loop. And use my nippers to cut off the rest of that excess wire. And when I do that, I always grip it, make sure it doesn't go flying into somebody's face. So there we got a wrap loop. Now I'm going to take this piece of, of a necklace that I, I, I finished, just finished the last, the last row of the uh, seed bead loop. And then I've coming out of this white bead right here, I'm going to pick up all three of the white beads. I'm not going to add any more, just pick up the three white beads so that they're gathered in the center. Ta-da! So I've got all three beads together in the center. And I might even go through them again just to make them nice and tight. Or I'll go through one more time. There we go. So we've got a nice little circle of white beads. And now I'm just going to take that loop and I'm going to sew it onto the center of this. Again, I don't care if it's pretty or not. It doesn't matter because we're going to cover this up with that really pretty cone. So I'm going to sew the, the, the wrap loop in there and I'm going to sew this any old way I want. It doesn't matter because it doesn't have to be pretty. Just sew my wrap loop on there. I'll go through the loop. I'll go through a bead. Mostly I'm working with those white beads. I'll go through the loop and through a bead. And anyone who knows me knows I like to do at least three passes for strength on pretty much anything where I'm doing fire line. At least three passes. Sometimes when I'm in the mood, I might do six or seven. It just doesn't matter. As long as it's secure and strong and fortitude and fortified and all that good stuff. Don't worry about it. And then, hmm, let me see, what do I want to do next? I could tie a knot, I can make half hitches, I can weave down into my pattern. I can do a lot of things to secure this. I don't want it wrapped around there though. Come on down. 
down, down, down. There we go. Um, so what I'm going to do on this one is I'll go, I'm just going to tie a couple of half hitches. So a half hitch, you go through whatever. I'm going through a seed bead, and I'm going back through my loop of thread. It's basically a knot. And I'll do a couple of those because that's going to secure it best. And I am pretty, pretty particular about my jewelry design staying together. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use my thread burner to nip off this excess piece of thread. This, the tip of this gets really hot and it melts the thread almost instantaneously when you push the button. So I push the button, melt this little piece of thread. And also, because this is nylon and when it melts, it makes a tiny little ball of melted nylon. And so that helps keep that knot from coming undone. And just because I am that way, I'm also going to add a little bit of this E6000 fray lock to help that knot keep from coming untied. And like I said, I don't care if it's ugly because it's going to be under the cone. So I can put a big old blob of glue on there if I want. Don't worry about it. It's not going to show. Ta-da! So I feel secure in that knot now. So here's what we've got. I don't want to end my necklace like that. So... <laughs> I'll put a cone on top of that. Isn't that a pretty one? Looks kind of bad, but looks like a badminton birdie. There we go. Put the cone on the end of my wire. It covers up the end of my, my, my stitching. And I like just a little bit of finishing on this because it's got kind of a big hole in the top of that cone. So I'm putting a little two and a half millimeter silver plated bead on there. I mean, it's tiny. You can't, it's like a seed bead almost. In fact, if you wanted to, you could use a seed bead. Maybe a red one to go with, or a carnelian one. There we go. So I put a little cone on there, and now I'm going to make a wrap loop. And this time, I'm going to really try to make it a pretty wrap loop. I'm not, I have, to, this one's going to show. So we try and make it pretty, just like I did before, but maybe a little slower. So I make, I leave myself a bit of a stem. This is where the wraps are going to be, right here. And I usually try and guesstimate about three wraps, maybe a little less. So I'm guessing three wraps will fit in there. Give it a 90 degree bend. Take my round nose pliers, grip it above the bend. Wrap this tail up and over. Take the pliers out, reposition with the bottom jaw into that loop. Finish the loop, change hands. With my chain nose pliers, I will use that to make my loops, my wraps, one below the other one so that they're right adjacent to each other and they make a pretty pattern. And I guesstimated my three loops pretty darn well. I like this to come up really tight up against the ball of my, of the cone here so that this whole thing, this whole assembly is nice and tight. And then making sure I don't fling that at anyone. Nip off that end. Make sure the end is smooth. If the end is not smooth that it could like nick somebody's neck or anything like that, I also get in there with my chain nose pliers and just make sure that that little end is pushed down and smooth. Ta-da! And that's how you finish the end. Now I can use a, um, um, what am I trying to think of? <laughs> a jump ring, a jump ring to add a clasp. And of course, I do the other, same on the other end once I get it long enough. I don't think you want to watch me make that long enough. So we will say that part is done and move on to making this odd count peyote focal. Oh, and as you know, these are getting more and more elaborate. So I want you to know I will not be stitching this entire project <laughs> in front of you. We will be using step outs and skipping ahead. So. Don't feel f afraid that you're going to be stuck in front of this TV for 12 hours before you get to the <laughs> end. <laughs> All right. We are ready to get started on this big focal. And again, you don't want to watch me stitch this whole thing, so we'll just show you sections. But this is a beautiful geometric ombre with this nice red agate nausea. These nausea shapes are very popular right now, so get on that bandwagon. All right. Now, I did create a pattern for this. I'll show it to you. It's basically an ombre. We've got white, linen, 
gray, gunmetal, and black, and then we repeat that. And then we repeat it over and 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 over. And over. So <laughs> don't feel free, feel you need to have this pattern. I will demonstrate how I do it. All right, so the first thing, just like in Even Count Peyote, which we did in episode four, uh, we're going to pick up the seed beads. We pick up three whites. Oh, notice, here's another little trick, seed bead trick. This white and this linen look almost the same color. So I put the white over on the far side so that I don't get the colors mixed up like I just did with that gray and that little linen. But I can see the difference between those two, but it's really hard to tell the difference between the linen and the white. So to get this started, just like in Even Count Peyote, I pick up the first two rows of stitching, which is three whites, one, two, three, three of the linen, because we're making an ombre, we're making it just a little bit darker. Three of the grays, there's one that snuck in there. One, two, three. Three of the gunmetal, one, two, three. Five of the blacks, oh, let me get this out of my way. Thank you. Five of the blacks, two, three, four, five. And then we go back in reverse order. So three gunmetal, and three gray, and three linen, and three white, and I end up with both of my first two rows that look just like that. Oh, I put a stop bead on too. I neglected to talk about that. That was in episode four, eh, one of the episodes anyway, where you put on a bead and then you wrap around it once so that it just stays there. You can slide it up and down the thread, but it prevents your beads from falling off the end. That's what that stop bead's for. Okay. So nothing's changed here from the even count peyote from, from the last episode. So we're just going to continue the pattern. So here we're going to start off with a white. I pick up a white, I skip a bead, and stitch a bead. And uh, if you remember that other episode, I also showed four different ways to start even count peyote. Doesn't work on odd count. So the only way I know, and I bet you there's somebody else out there who knows better than me, uh, I only know the traditional method. So there we got the first little T. And then I want to put another white on top of that white. So it's another white. Skip a bead. Go through a bead. I go all the way down this row. I already hear people going heavy sigh. <laughs> There's nothing fast about seed beads generally. Now we're into this linen color. Skip a bead, stitch a bead. And I'm not looking at the pattern, I'm just looking at the beads I've got on my first two rows. All I have to do is put the same color on top of the color that was there in the row previous. So next is a gray. Skip a bead and stitch a bead. If you watched the episode where we did even count peyote, you can fast forward. Next, I want to put a gray on top of that, so I have to go to the gray. Skip a bead, stitch a bead. All right, I'll fast forward. <laughs> we'll add one more bead. I'm going to pick up a gunmetal, skip a bead, and stitch a bead. So this is almost a complete row. We've gone all the way down, and I've got three rows. This represents three rows. We've got the white, the linen, the gray, the gunmetal, the black, and then repeating gunmetal, gray, linen, and white. But the hard part here is now that we're at the end, we want to put a white bead right here. Okay, sure, swell. Let's put a white bead right there. But now we've got this white bead hanging off the end here and nothing to stitch to. We're done. That's the challenge of odd count peyote is that and when you get to the end, because you have an odd number of beads, we have 29 beads here in the two rows, there's nowhere to go. So what we have to do 
is instead of going through the next bead, which doesn't exist, we're going to go back through this bead right here, the one that's right next to your stop bead. Back through that bead. We make sure everything lines up. This bead needs to lay on top of this bead, sort of rolled over so that it will s form its nice little cylinder on top. There we go. Get it to line up. You have to make it behave. But now we're coming out this bead in the wrong direction. So we have to get this turned around. And it's a bit convoluted getting it turned around. So I'm going to go up to this bead, the diagonal one above. My objective, and I talked about this in the other one, my objective is to come out of this bead going this direction. That's my objective. So I'm going to go through this bead, that one that's kind of in the middle, and keeping in mind my objective, coming out this bead that direction. Oh my goodness. So I'm next, I'm going to go through this one down below. It could be the one above too, it doesn't matter. I've thought of a plan in my, in my, in my head. Now I'm going to go through this one in this direction and this one in that direction. In fact, if I can, I'm going to go through that third one too. Go through all three of these. Ta-da! Can you see that? I'm going to go through all three of those. Pull everything nice and tight. Ignore that tail that's kind of getting in our way. And look where I am. Perfecto! Because next I can go through here, which was my objective. Ta-da! And now, just like an even count, we're ready to go again. Let's turn this over from my right-handedness to this direction, and off I go. So I'm in the white section of this ombre, so I'll pick up a white bead, skip a bead, and go through the next up bead. Remember that term, up beads. Go through that up bead. Then I'm above that linen color, and that's kind of challenging. Remember that linen color looks almost white, but it's not, and it does make a difference. So pay attention to your colors and add a bead. And we're still in the linen section, so I'll add a bead. And we're going to continue on just like that, just like in any every ordinary day type of peyote stitch. There's nothing fancy after that. We we'll just keep going. Now I'm in the gray section, so I add a gray. And keep on going. Finish row three. Every odd row, you're going to have to do that funny little turnaround. Let's take a little break. I want to get to the end of this and come back and show you how to do another turnaround. So I finished row four, the even row down, and I came back with row five. That's an odd count row, so it's going to have an odd ending. Um, let me just finish this row. I need another white one. Skip a bead, stitch a bead, and here's that funny little ending. I need one more white. Ah, I came unth unthreaded. All right. There we go. Add the white bead. And now we're at that funny ending where I can add another white bead, but I've got nowhere to stitch it to. So just like on row three, I'm going to go down to the row below. Make this one little bead line up the way I want. Line up. There we go. Ta-da! This is actually a little easier because now I've got a little more body to work in. So I'm going to go down one more bead. It's that row three is the toughest one. This one's easy. Down one more row. Now I'm going to go up to the one right above the one I just came out of. I'm going to go through this one and this one. In one swell foop like that. And you notice how as I pull that thread through, even though I'm using black thread, 
It just disappears into the ditch. Pop. And now I'm at my objective. And now I can just continue peyoting to my heart's content. I'm in the white section, so I'll add a white bead, skip that down bead, go through the up bead, and we are happy beaters again. And you're going to keep doing that and doing that and doing that for many hours. <laughs> well, not many hours to get to this point. A few hours to get to this point. And we'll get to this larger piece of nice ombre. And it's time to think about these um, straps that are going to go over your necklace. So on this one, let me see. All I had to do was, instead of starting on the very first bead, I just thread it over a little bit and start it on this bead. And I'm doing this strap with three of the linen color and three of the gray color. And I did that for a very important reason, because by doing three and three, I've got an even number, and I can do even count peyote up here. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes we go for the even, because it's just a little bit easier. Don't have to do those extra steps at the ends of the odd rows. So here we have two straps that are going to go over my necklace. And it's just a case of finding your needle, finding the end you were working on. Hmm. I believe that was the end I was working on. And I thought I'd just put a needle on it. I guess I didn't. There we go. We'll take any needle that's handy. And this is just doing some more peyote until the strap is long enough. And I want the two straps to be the same length. I think I need like one more row on here. And this is the linen color. Don't get confused. That is not the white. If you started stitching all white on there, now it'd look really silly. Even though it's such a settled color difference. So I added a linen. Another linen, a gray, and that finishes one row. Ta-da! Now I'm going to show you a cool tip. This is what I call fast peyote. I called it speed peyote, but people thought I was talking about drugs. So I call it fast peyote. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this whole row at once. I'm going to pick up all three of the beads I'm going to need for this. I'm going to need a gray, a gray, and a linen. Excuse me, all six beads. I need three grays and three linens. So I'm going to pick up three grays, because I'm actually going to add two rows at once. Three grays and three linens. This is called speed peyote. Some people like it, some people don't. On a simple pattern, I find it works great. On a hard pattern, it just takes me more time fixing errors. So instead of going in here where I normally go, I'm going to go the other side, the other direction. I'm going to go through here. Ta-da! So you can see I've got the whole row added. Now all I have to do is zip this up, and that adds another row. This little linen has to be on top of that little linen. This little linen needs to be on top of that linen, and I need to stitch through here to stitch it in place. Ta-da! Aha! This little linen, I'm going to go through, I mean not linen, this is the gray, and I'm going to stitch it through this gray. I'm just zipping it up, essentially. Zip. And the last one. All zipped in place. Just did two rows at once. Speed peyote, or fast peyote, sorry. <laughs> I'll do it one more time, show you. So I'm going to ha add three grays and three linens. Now, with a complicated pattern, this can be really challenging. So, good idea to, to, to keep, keep with the, the simple ones. You can see how they line up there. I'm going to go in the opposite side the opposite direction, and all these beads are lining up, and I just zip them up. As soon as I go through there. Go through that little linen, and the next little linen. 
pull that through, zipping it up. Oops, I accidentally went through an extra bead. Don't do that. I'm going to take that out. There we go. And go through this gray and this gray. Zip it up. And the last gray. Zipped. Two rows at once. Ha ha ha! Hope you like that tip. That's a cool one. Okay, so now I've got my straps that are long enough to go over the necklace part I made. So what I do is I, I measured, of course, to make sure it's going to fit. So it's going to fit over there, and I'm going to be able to stitch the back. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to look from this side to the back, and I'm going to fold this over. And just like I did with that fast peyote, I'm going to zip it up. So I figure out which row is going to blend, and I zip through them. I'm going to go through this gray. And when you do this correctly, it looks almost seamless. So I'm going through that gray. I'm going through this gray on my strap. I'm going through this gray on the body. And only that gray. I don't let my thread come undone. <laughs> I go through this linen on the strap, through this linen on the body, body, and through this linen on the strap. Pretty much seamless. You can't really see where that is when I get it nice and tight. And I usually go through this a couple of times because this is a, a stressor point here. Um, or I can also start working my way down, which I work my way down through my beads. For one thing, this secures my thread. As I work down, I make all the threads disappear into the ditch, always. If you go through two or three or four be beads, it doesn't matter. But what I want to do is I want to stitch down, 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 down into the body of this thing. So I've added some more thread to my design and I've worked my way down through all this feed bead work down to where I want to add my nausea. It's going to go right here. So I need to make a strap to go around it. And the strap will be all black. What I'm doing now, this is going to be hard to see. I'm going to see if we can get that in there. Is here's where my thread is coming out, right here. Maybe if I use the bigger pointer. My thread is coming out right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a strap across here by just pretending this is actually the end of my row. And I'm just going to start stitching as if it were a brand new row. So I've already got row one in place. I'm going to put in row two which is to put a bead right here, a black bead. So I grab a black bead. I'm going to place it right here so I have to go into the next bead. Just like as if you were at the very end of things, so we're actually just working from the middle. So I'm going to add a bead. And this is five beads across, so we are working odd count peyote now. Now I need to put another black bead here. Wow, that is really hard to see. Hope you're getting this. Black bead here, so I pick up a black bead, and I skip that place where I want the black bead to land, and I go to the next bead. Ta da 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 da. So I've got two beads there now. Next one is one of those odd counts, so we've got to figure out how to get the bead in there. I want a bead to land right there. But I got to figure out how to stitch it in. Reality is, with this, remember what I said when we got to the end of Odd Count Peyote, we got nowhere to stitch to? But the reality is, we got a ton of places to stitch to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into this gray bead because I can. No matter what, I just want that bead, that black bead, to land where I told it to land, 
right there, and that works. Now we got to think of our objective. Our objective is to come out of this black bead going this direction. Right now, I'm coming out of this gray bead. That's not good. So we got to get a turnaround just like any other time. So I'm going to go through, oh, it doesn't matter. Let's, let, me, let me think of a pattern. You don't have to follow my pattern. Just figure it out where all the thread lands in the alleys and you end up coming back through that black bead. So if I go through this gray bead and then come back this way, and then, yeah, that'll work. Okay. <laughs> Did that make sense? I will show you what I was thinking. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, I'm going to go through this gray bead here. Can you all see that? Only the one gray bead, not all those other beads. One gray bead. Oh, yeah. Oh, I dropped something. It was just glue. I'm going to come back to the gray bead that was adjacent to that. I'm heading toward my objective. Who knew you could put seed beads in military terms? Finally, I'm going to go through this gray bead. We're getting really close. Can I go through the gray bead and the black bead at the same time? No, that would be too easy. I'll just go through the gray bead. And finally, through my objective, the black bead. There we go. Ta -da -da -da. Now we can start our second row of this strap. A black bead. Skip a bead. And go through the up bead. Now it's really clear which ones are up beads and which ones are down beads. So this is, this is the easy breezy time. This is an even count row, so this is easy breezy too, just like regular peyote. Pick up a black, go through there. Lands on the black. I'm, I'm going to put this black bead right here, so I'm going to go through the bead below it. And make it sit right there. You can see how we're making a little tiny strap. Okay, so I've got a strap. I've got a working piece of thread. I got a needle, and all I have to do is sew this strap together. I'm sorry, it's all in black. It's really hard to see, isn't it? And um, so I just line up my, my, my pieces. I can sew it directly here. I can sew it one thread down, wherever. Just make it line up so your ups and your downs are matching. So you got an up with a down, and an up with a down, and an up with a down, and an up with a down, back and forth. So I'm going to put this down. I'm coming out of a down bead right now. I'm going to put it through an up bead on the base. Then I'll go through the up bead on the strap. Then I'm going to go through an up bead on the base. And there I go, bending needles again. <laughs> I'm a big needle bender. <laughs> then through an upbeat on the strap. And upbeat on the base. Voila. And we've made a loop. A loop that our nausea can go through. Ta-da. Now, honestly, if I'm doing this for a finished piece of jewelry, I would go back and forth through that a couple of times because this is a stressor area. And then I would put a little bit of uh, glue on my nausea and slide it into place and let it cure. And the glue I would choose would be E6000. It's a good gap filling formula and it's got a kind of a gummy rubbery texture that's really cool for that. And then with this thread, if I have enough thread left over, I'll start tweedling it down until I get to the point, and I want to show you how you do the point on this focal piece. All right, so here we are with another little piece of my, my fabulous focal. Just a little piece because I didn't want to stitch the whole thing for you guys. I just want to show you how to do the tip on this now. So I've already got it started where I've started reducing. It's the same thing over and over to reduce. Um, and I'm, you may remember from a previous project that I showed you how to reduce. This is a little more. 
because we got a lot more to reduce. We're going to reduce all the way to a point. So at this time, I am now coming out of this linen colored bead right here. My objective, I know I sound like a rusty foghorn, <laughs> is to get out through this bead going that direction. Let me get that centered, all right, through that direction. Okay, so to get there, I will go down. Excuse me. Just stab myself with my needle because that's what I do. I go, let's see, I want my objective is here. So I'm going to go down one more, down and diagonal. And remember when you're planning your path for your objective that that, that extra piece of thread is going to land in the ditch so it won't be visible. Gone. Go up the one right above it. This works really good to see how that thread disappears into the ditch. Watch this. Here we go. And it's gone. <laughs> and out through my objective bead. And then I'll go all the way across following my pattern, which now we're in the linen color. So I pick up a linen bead, go through the up bead. Now we're in the gray section, so I pick up a gray. Go through the up bead, and now we're into the gunmetal section, so I pick up a gunmetal. And we're still in gunmetal, so I pick up another gunmetal. Kind of nice not having to follow a pattern, have something simply geometric like this, and just keep going. And black. And black again. And gunmetal. And gunmetal again. And gray. And linen. So we've reduced again, and again, my goal is, turn this over, my goal is to come out that bead going that direction. And so I plan my path. I'm going down with the thread going into the gully, going down again, down and diagonal through the gully. Think straight up above that bead, and here I am at my objective. And now we're in the gray, so I'll pick up a gray, and there's another gray after that. Of course, you could do these in any colors you want. Can you imagine this in rainbow colors or? Maybe shades of red and pink, or you know, use your creativity. All of our designs and the gallery of designs at FireMountainGems.com are copyrighted, and of course, we're not going to object if you want to make one a copy for yourself. But the reality is, if you're making a bunch for mass production or to sell, we are going to want you to change it up to your own style. And you can see I'm just straight peyote right across. It's only the ends when it gets kind of confusing. And I think you're getting the idea of how to reduce. The key is that having an objective and planning the path you that works. I've got a path. You might have a different one entirely. OK, we need to reduce again. Our objective is out through that gray bead right there. I'll go down, down in diagonal, straight up, and out through my objective.
Ta-da! I'm going to go ahead and continue this clear up to the point. We'll, we'll break a little bit and I'll show you how it looks when we get to the very point. <laughs> Welcome back. I've been stitching my little fingers to the bone to get to this point. I want you to see that final point being put on. So I've come out this bead right here. I'm going to follow my path to my objective. I'm going down one. I'm going down in diagonal one more. And I'm going straight up. And I'm going through my objective bead. Oh, everybody sing the praises of, of whatever hymn you want to sing. And we're going to add that last black bead to finish the point of this necklace. Ta-da! So there's our point. And to finish this last little piece of thread, just like usual, just finish weaving that back in until you feel the thread is secure. Go back and forth a couple times. I like to do figure eights because then I feel like I've come back against my own thread and I've sort of made a knot. And that is all lovely and good. Pull this through. Use my thread burner. And there is the tip of this entire, let's show it again, that entire focal. So we created the straps that wrap around the necklace part. We've added the strap that adds the nausea part. We've added that nice little tip at the end. Let's put on a clasp. So we've got this necklace piece we did at the very beginning, added the cones, but let's put the clasp on just to be finished. Uh, I'm using a couple of jump rings. I've twisted the jump ring open, put it onto the end of my necklace, add my clasp, and twist the jump ring closed. Sometimes I'll even do two jump rings for security. I don't think my mm, I don't think my hole's quite big enough to make two and make them hang right. So I'll put that there. And then I this is a really big lobster claw clasp. Really big one. So I need to have a big ring on this side to attach the lobster claw to. So I'm going to take another jump ring. And this fun little closed ring might be a washer for all I know. <laughs> put it on there and add that to the other side of my clasp. And voila, we have our completed necklace. So that is the conclusion of episode six of the Secrets to Seed Beads. Next episode, we're going to add on to this some more. And we're going to build this necklace. Now this one is using peyote again, but this time we're going to be doing tubular peyote, which we've had a hint at in an earlier episode, but not a full-on tubular peyote to wrap around this bear claw. And this is spiral herringbone stitch. So you've got a couple new techniques ready to be ready to learn in episode six. And we hope very much that you'll join us for all 10 episodes of Secrets to Seed Beads here at Fire Mountain Gems. And you can always check out these videos and many, many, many other techniques at firemountaingems.com. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I wouldn't want you to miss any of it. Happy beading. Thank you.